Hey everybody, this is going to be a pretty short video. I'm just going to go over a rating system that I've come up with for how I'm going to rate games moving forward. Um, I'm just going to go back and kind of hit all the games that I've done already. Uh, and then at the end of each video moving forward, I'm going to just do the same thing for that specific game. So, according to this system, I don't know how well it's going to work. It seems to work fine. Um, each game starts with five points, and then for these five questions, is it did it look good? Is it worth the price? Can you play it again? Does it have a good soundtrack? And is it buggy? They're going to get plus one or minus one or zero, depending on how well they answer that question. And then a total score out of ten. And then the most important question, was it fun? So, uh, for the first one, that's 11, 11 Memories Retold. So, it was pretty. It was very artsy. Um, it's a little expensive, so I give it a minus one for that. It's probably not worth it to play it again. It kind of had a mediocre soundtrack, and it wasn't completely smooth, but it also didn't have any game-breaking bugs. So I gave it a 5 out of 10, and it was fun. Uh, 123 Slaughter Me Street was, uh, it was not pretty at all. It was, the price was understandable. <laughs> uh, it did, was, can't re, probably should not replay that game if you ever get around to playing it the first time. Terrible soundtrack. It w was smooth, though. It was smooth as hell. So I gave it a three. Uh, and, of course, I had fun playing it. Uh, for 1954 Alcatraz, it wasn't pretty, but it also wasn't ugly, so I gave it a zero. Um, I'd say it was worth the price. It didn't have good replayability. It had a mediocre soundtrack and was smooth, so I gave it a six. Uh, three Switched was the sci-fi Bejeweled clone <coughs> that had a weird... Uh, I, I, I gave it a 1 for pretty because it had that weird 3D camera effect. Uh, but it's not worth the price. No replayability. Bad, terrible soundtrack. But it was smooth. It got, it got a 4. Uh, 60 Parsecs was not pretty, but was also not meant to be pretty, so I gave it a 0. Um, it was worth the price. Had great replayability. It's one of those just roguelike games. Um... It, I don't remember it having a really good soundtrack when I played it, so I give it a zero. But it was not buggy or clunky. It got an eight. That's the best best ranking game so far. Uh, Seven Days to Die uh, was not pretty. Um, it's I got an okay price. It's got good replayability because it's a survival game, and I don't think it has a soundtrack, so I give it a zero. And it's not buggy, but it's also not a pristine, pristinely developed game. Got a five. Absolver was the weird fighting game. It was very pretty. Uh, it was too expensive. You could play it over again very well, I think. Um, I don't remember anything about the soundtrack, so we gave it a zero. Uh, it was ran very smoothly, so I gave it a seven. Um, Adrift was the Space Sea story game. Um, it was very pretty. I'd say the price was reasonable. Um, it does not have good replayability because it's a linear story game. It has great soundtrack because it uses classical music. And it ran very smoothly. So, 7. Uh, the Adventure Pals was the most recent edition. Um, it was not pretty, but it was not meant to be pretty. It was it has an okay price. Um, it has a gr good replayability, I think. Because you can go through and get all the collectibles again, on even within the same game. The same instance of the game, I mean. Um, it had a pretty okay soundtrack, and it was not buggy or clunky at all, but we had some problems with the multiplayer, so I gave it a zero. Uh, Age of Empires 2. Uh, not pretty at all. <laughs> How, um, and the only reason it's not worth the price is because it's still at like $20, and the DLC is like $20 a piece each, and it's like a 20-year-old game at this point. So... Uh, so it's got great replayability. It's an RTS. Uh, it's got great iconic soundtrack, and it is not buggy or clunky at all. So I got a seven. Age of Empires three ranked about the same, um, but for different reasons. It is definitely not worth the price, but it is a little bit prettier than Age of Empires two. Unfortunately, Age of Empire or Age of Mythology, um, the only thing it had going for it is its replayability as an RTS. It's not pretty. It's too expensive. It's got terrible soundtrack. And it's kind of buggy, depending on the computer that you're running. Uh, Age of Wonders 3 was the fantasy Civ-like game. Um, 
plus one for being pretty. It's got an okay price tag. It's got great replayability as a TBS. Uh, okay soundtrack. Not a lot of bugs. Uh, Alum, <laughs> which was the only game so far that I have ranked as not fun. Um, it was not pretty. It was not worth the price. Uh, well, I guess it had a mediocre price. It was... Uh, let, me, let me rephrase that. It, um, so, the pixel art, I think, was well done. But it also didn't stand out. Um, the price was a little bit high, but I don't think that anybody should buy this game. So, that's why I gave it a zero. Terrible replayability, because I didn't even finish it the first time. Um, soundtrack was original, at best. And it ran smooth. That's the only thing it had going for it. So it got a five. Rip. One, two, three. <laughs> Slaughtery Street and Age of Mythology. Uh, and then finally, Ancient Guardian. Um, I got a, I got a, I gave it a minus one because it's just a, a Unity game and <laughs> didn't look very pretty. Um, I'd say its price was fair. It doesn't really have good replayability. Um, I don't think it had a soundtrack but it also wasn't very buggy, so it got a 3 as well. But I did have fun playing it. Um, and for that one, I'll say that it is in like super early access, and so if they keep working on it, then it pr might be a fun game. I don't know. Uh, so that's it. That's every, that we're all caught up. Uh, <laughs> we're all caught up now. Um, and I'll keep using this system moving forward for all the games. Okay, bye.